Oh, so there's been some learning. 63% uh, are now answering E, none of the above, which is the correct answer. And so uh, now Dr. Cazola will be fielding some questions from our audience uh, for Dr. Bernard. Okay. So Monia Marchetti from Italy is asking uh, Elsa if you would favor an exclusively molecular-based classification of myeloid neoplasms. Hi, <clears throat> thank you very much for the question. So um, I think it's a bit too early to, to favor a classification which would be exclusively molecular, but, and of course this has to be a college uh, um, step forward, but I would be in favor of a classification which is where, where the backbone is a genetic etiology and where, and where transforming factors such as excess blast are then um, incorporated on top of that backbone. If you think about it, even MDS del 5 q as soon as the blast, as soon as we have excess blast, we lose the, the genetic etiology of the 5 q and that will be the same for other um, genetic um, abnormalities. So my, my answer is uh, based on molecular alterations, but with transform transforming factor that includes, for example, excess blast. I can only add that uh, the CAC group is working on this point and probably will uh, uh, publish a special report in 2022. Uh, then Jane Churpek is uh, asking if you feel that uh, the young female cases without any driver mutations are actually MDS or not. It's a very good question, but I'm afraid I don't have the answer. So of course, when we screen for UB1 mutation, we only found them in males, um, but also with autoimmunity that were not strong enough for diagnosis, but they were present. For the females, I don't have the answer. Good question. Mm -hmm. um, we have several question, uh, questions. One. Uh, is uh, uh, on SFRV1 mutant NDS. And uh, the question is uh, how the different uh, commutations uh, can impact on the, effic the efficacy of uh, Luspatercept. As um, Elsa is not a clinician, I, I uh, will try to answer this point and uh, saying that probably uh, the cases uh, without uh, commutations or with uh, commutations uh, in DTDA are probably those more uh, uh, likely to respond uh, to loss pattern set. But only real life uh, clinical studies uh, will, uh, will uh, provide uh, an answer. Um, in Laura Palomo from Barcelona, I suppose, uh, is asking uh, if uh, patients uh, with uh, DDX41 uh, somatic only mutations have, uh, may have uh, uh, a germline mutation outside the coding uh, region of the gene. Yeah, it's a good question because indeed uh, those patients have simi similar patterns of commutation, similar clinical presentation than the one with an observed germline. So it's very intriguing. I mean, unfortunately, you know, the, the panel we have is, ex is exon based, is ex extends a little bit outside of the exons, but not so much. So we're not able to, we're not able to call deep intronic uh, variant. Uh, we haven't, there was no fly like smoking gun with regard to supply site variant or something else, but we might have some miss some rare, some rare germline variants possible. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, Mer Zaydan uh, is focusing on uh, MPM1. So uh, the question basically is, uh, are these patients uh, really MDS or just uh, in initial phase on the AML. Yeah, exactly. It's a great point. I mean, we 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 see we see a very strong association with AML transformation and with so with regard to outcomes, but also with regard to molecular association, 
they are, the commutations pattern is clearly the same as in AML, even though we do have small number in MDS, we see patterns of commutation with the NT3A uh, as a strongest, as a strongest commutator and then, and then fleet three and other signal engines. So they, they have a lot, they resemble a lot, not only on the, uh, on transformation to AML, but also on the molecular uh, patterns. I think. Uh, one question regards uh, UBA1. Do you think that uh, the sensitivity of NGS is sufficient for detection of uh, UBA1 mutations? Right, thank you. Um, I don't have data to answer that because for, I mean, the UBA1 mutation we've been screened for for now, we, have the, we only have the DDPCR results, which are extremely sensitive. But based on the DDPCR and also based on the other reports, those mutations are not extremely subclonal. They tend to be rather clonal in most cases. So in that case, NGS will be like, I mean, there will have been no problem. There are a few that have that have a few droplets in DDPCR assays that will be indeed tricky to, to detect with the sensitive NGS, but, but for the large portion, there will be no problem. Especially there on the X chromosome, so the VAF, um, yeah, in the male, so the VAF gets very high. Okay, yes, uh, thank you very much again for your excellent presentation. And uh, we can move to the next presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs> We are now going to hear from Dr. Luca Malcavati, and we will start off with his first polling question. Which of the following statements regarding DDX41 mutation in patients with myeloid neoplasms is false? A, the clinical